Romachuk, on the other hand, has really got his work cut out for him to keep up with guys like Chalet and Catona on this event. If he wants one of those top two spots, he's going to have to put together the performance of a lifetime. Off to a good start. Second stone, 285 pounds. Chalet had a big bobble on that first stone. Very uncharacteristic of him. He's perhaps being a little too relaxed here. Lawrence Chalet already into the final. Meanwhile, Sergey Romanchuk struggling here as he approaches this fourth stone, which weighs 375 pounds. Not the performance that Romanchuk may have hoped for. Can't even keep up with Chalet's relaxed Ooh. pace. Speaking Lawrence of relaxed, Chalet. I, I think uh, maybe he was a little too relaxed. You know, he's trying to save his resources here, trying to save his energy, not going 100% saving it for the final, being strategic, being smart, and sometimes that's when guys get hurt. I scared myself, I'm fine. Right? No, 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 I, my ankle. But it's fine. So. You heard it, he's fine. Meanwhile, Sergey Romanchuk, a strong performance, four stones in 42.83 seconds, but not good enough, and he's eliminated from the final. The Atlas stone's just a little too much for the Ukrainian, and in fact, England's Lawrence Chalet also outmatched by the stones. So Espen Auna of Norway knows exactly what he needs to do to have a chance to advance to the final. If he can beat Irvin Katona by three places in this event, he'll progress. So that means if he wins this event, Katona has to finish in fourth or worse. Irvin Katona clearly in the driver's seat. If he beats Auna head to head or finishes at least in third in the Atlas Stones, the Serbian moves on. So here we go with our final heat. One of these two men will join Lawrence Chalet in the final, and Irvin Katona off to a good start. Both men placing the 265-pound stone. Yeah, that was pretty much a tie for that first stone. Looks like the Norwegian's just a little bit faster. He's going to have to have a really great performance. And he's putting that together here, but never count Katona out. He is a fierce competitor. Well, the fourth stone will be a key at 375 pounds. Katona has placed it, so he has assured himself a spot in the final. But I'm pretty sure he doesn't realize that. Certainly, both guys want to lift all five stones. And this is difficult. 395 pounds. Katona played it smart. Mission accomplished for the Serbian. He's going to the final. Espinada now knowing that it is over, he will not be moving on to the final. Katona doesn't need it, and that's how it will end. Great performance by both men, but it will be Irvin Katona who moves on. His time, four stones, 27.64 seconds, gives him second place. Espinada gets the victory with the fastest time for the four stones, but it's not enough. Alna, he won Norway's strongest man. He fought hard to be here, but ultimately it was the man from Serbia who edged out the Norwegian in his first trip ever to the world's strongest man. All five men finished four stones, but Espen Alna did it in the fastest time. Unfortunately, victory here was not enough for the Norwegian. Irvin Katona locks up his second appearance in the final by finishing in second place. Chalet wins the group with 30 points. Katona edges out Auna 23 to 21 for second, and more importantly, a berth in the World's Strongest Man final. All three of these guys are kind of light. You expect them to be agile, speedy, and really good at an event like this. Now remember, that's 275 pounds in each sack. Not to mention the thick sand they've got to get through. Remember, they've got to place it on the platform. It has to stay on the platform. And here's where Jason Bergman's height really hurt him. Yeah, the athletes, when they get to the platform, they've got to time a little hip pop and fall forward with the bag after they pop their hips through and roll the bag up their chest. Mateusz Barone, first one to place, three sacks. Remember, that's 275 pounds, and he's got to make sure that one stays on there. So they go to the fourth and final sack at 275 pounds, and you can see, Phil, just how spent these guys are. Yeah, this is where they're hitting the wall. This is where the will comes in. 
blast through, even though they can barely breathe. They've got to gut out that last Up, And Bayron loses one. He's got to place that back on there for him to be complete. And Bergman just can't hold on to the sack anymore. Can't walk anymore. Hands off, hands off, hands off. And just getting done under the clock at 113-17 for Bayron as he is the first to complete the course. He's a little frustrated there. He lost some valuable time not getting his hands off and also having the one sack fall. Lawless looked like he had the Kazmaier stare there, Todd. He's looking really intense. Terry looked a little more relaxed, but still intense. Terry Holland's pursuing his sixth straight appearance in the finals, desperate to finish better than third. That's what he got in 2007. Now remember, these sacks, 275 pounds apiece. Lawless setting the pace. Look how he uses his feet. Short, fast, quick, choppy steps. That's what you want to be efficient and fast in the sand here. Terry having a lot of trouble with that third sack, getting a good grip. Also struggling right there to load. Not perfect technique, but getting the job done. And he's got it. Vitotas Lalas with the fastest time at just over 44 seconds. Vildauer also loading the final sack. Martin Vildauer will grab second place, and Terry Holland into third. So Vitotas Laulas of Lithuania wins the first event, the loading race, in a time of 44.06 seconds. Martin Vildauer with a strong time and an impressive hat, 48.93 seconds. And in third, Englishman Terry Hollins at 58.64. Great times from all three of the guys. Lawless, though, just smoking the course. Vildauer not far behind. Lawless, the picture of efficiency, really, really strong on every sack. Bill Kazmaier standing by with the event winner. Vitotis, you missed out on making the final last year. How important was it to do well in this event? Well, always to start well in the, in the, in the heat is, is very important, and I think I've done it. What's the hardest part of this event? Well, the running is the hardest part for the, for the big guys, especially in the sand, you know? Legs sink in, and it just after every sack is just getting heavier and heavier. You're getting like muscle pumps, so it's pretty hard. You did a great job. Thank you very much. Lalas gets the win in a six points. Runner up is Martin Vildauer. Terry Holland's in third, and Jason Bergman of the USA concerned about a sixth place finish, but five events still remain. Remember, those kegs start at 40 and go all the way up to 55 pounds. Well, he's got kind of the perfect build for this. He's not especially muscle bound. It takes a relaxed flexibility to swing that keg back, engage the whole posterior chain, fire it all at once, and arc the keg just right to go over the bar. These red kegs, 50 pounds. Now he's onto the final two. The gold ones are 55 pounds apiece. And his first miss. It looked like his hips may have been a little tired. He's got to engage the hips, fire through all at once, and really launch that keg. And he gets it over with one to go. Can Martin Vildauer of Austria complete the whole stack? Boy, at this point, Phil, you've got to be absolutely exhausted. Yeah, I don't think his posterior chain's letting him relax enough to really reach back and fully engage the body's power. And just not enough strength there to get the last keg over, so Martin Vildauer will be credited with seven kegs. That's still a great performance. Seven kegs, that's a lot of good work. At this point, he was really exhausted, just muscling through, managed to get number seven, but couldn't repeat for number eight. So the 23-year-old Austrian is our current leader as we move on to Vitautas Lawless. He won the first event, the loading race. Now it's his turn to try his luck in the keg toss. Well, that first one, it definitely had the height, but just not the right trajectory, Tom. An easy fix. That one was close. And again, he's having a problem with the angle. So the 29-year-old Lithuanian having to work this out. And this is one of those events, Phil, I'm sure it's a little bit difficult to find the apparatus to, to train with. 
not only that, you know, even if you're really well practiced, you've got to be in tune with your body and have a sense of what the trajectory is like versus your position relative to the ball. And he's done it. 35-4-8 for Laulis. Fantastic recovery. Really shows great composure from Vitotas, the total package from Lithuania. He's surprised. He's pretty happy with that performance. But look, a critical mistake that cost him a few extra seconds. But eight kegs successfully over the bar, that's always something to be proud of, regardless of the time. And that time was pretty strong, Todd. That is a contented man, Vitotas Laulas. Already has one win, and now he's backed that up with an impressive performance in the keg toss. Who will challenge the Lithuanian? Could be Wisconsin's Jason Bergman or Terry Hollins of England. This is the Metrics World's Strongest Man. <laughs>